I've got a great unboxing for you today. With not one, not two, but three boxes from Zortrax. Let's get started. So, in box number one, and believe me, this box is really heavy. We've got the Zortrax Inventure. Now, the Zortrax Inventure has actually been out for a little while, but just recently, I think Zortrax have decided to really push this machine, and so there's some incredible deals on it at the moment, and you can pick one up for 716 great British pounds if you're in the UK, like myself. Let's get it open. Packing list and what looks like other documentation. Power cable. Set of four build trays. The Zortrax Inventure starter kit. Zortrax materials. We have here black ZPETG. And last but by no means least, we have some more ZPETG. Okay. So obviously, first impressions of this machine is it is very heavy. Uh, I know I've already said that, but it, it really is. For the size, it's, uh, it's quite a unit. For me, that normally screams great build quality because they're not skimping on any of the materials. But hopefully, the prints, when I do the review video, will live up to that tale. Zortrax is a Polish company, and they've created this printer to be the sort of gold standard prosumer desktop 3D printer. It's not about size because the prints you'll get offered are quite small at 135 by 135 by 130 millimeters. So quite a small little box, but on the flip side, we've got what will hopefully be quite an impressive bit of kit with nozzles capable of printing up to around 290 degrees C, and there's two of them, so that means for some soluble supports, and also a passively heated build chamber because the unit is fully enclosed. I've always really wanted to get to grips with soluble supports, but I've never really taken the plunge. I'm hoping this machine will help me get there. If you've got any ideas of what I should print with this printer, let me know. Open up the starter kit. The starter kit we've got another bill plate, screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver. A nice set of Allen keys, Zortrax branded scraper, card reader. We've got this tightening wrench, which is presumably for the nozzles. 0.35 millimeter pin for cleaning nozzles, and a 0.4 millimeter pin for cleaning nozzles. And then we've got this hook, which I imagine is for removing the beds when it's hot, and some service grease. So the next step on the documentation is to open this top door and remove all the packaging materials. Once those foam pieces are removed and it reveals the extruder unit, you've got some really interesting design in here. They've got a sort of foam layer, which you can see here, completely enclosing off the build volume below, which is pretty cool. The main extruder block and the hot end cartridge is made from FDM printing or, since I'm doing a Zortrax video, LPD, layer plastic deposition. As a side note, that is what Zortrax call their plastic FDM style printers. I quite like it to be honest, it's a little bit more specific than FDM, fused deposition modelling, as it tells you specifically it's done in layers and it's done from plastic. So I quite like their, their branding there. Giving the extruder hot end a quick push around, it feels nice and smooth. I'm looking forward to getting it printing. There's a little clip on top of the fan, which is also 3D printed, and it looks like it could potentially come loose. However, the lid of this is generally shut and there's not much human intervention in here, so it should be okay. That's something I'll monitor. Now, I'll open up the door, like so. It almost looks a bit like a a mini oven, which I quite like. It's sort of a, a sleek, masculine design with the black colours, the smooth filleted edges. It's a pretty smart looking unit at the price point that it is. I know it's a small build volume, but it's still pretty impressive. 
and here we have the left and right spool holders, also 3D printed. And it feels like these are done in PLA. I quite like that Zortrax are embracing some 3D printed parts, even though they clearly are capable of this sort of production. It's just a testament really to 3D printing in general, how far it's come, and also the fact that you can do things with 3D printing that you just can't do with other technologies. And then going to insert one of the build trays, of which, as I said, they have provided four, and they look like this. Divided into nine squares, and we've got these different points here, which I imagine are to do with the leveling, but we will see later. Insert into the printer, push backwards, and then we've got these little clips which just clip up like so to hold the bed firmly in place. As I said before, this printer really is designed to be a desktop workhorse, so I suspect that's why they provided four build plates included for the price rather than trying to add it on top so that you've got that sort of quick change functionality. And also, I'm imagining you won't be losing temperature in the chamber if you can quickly change out your prints. So that's always nice. It's always annoying when uh, you've got a bed stuck to the print, the bed's hot, you're dying to get the next thing on and so you start jamming at the bed with all sorts of equipment and break your glass or whatever bed plate you're using. Won't have to do that with this one, so that's a good sign. So the next step is to get the printer plugged in and switched on. Turn on time. On first switch on, you'll need to add the latest firmware. Go to support.zortrax.com slash downloads, click Inventure, download the firmware, put it on your SD card, and then back in the printer. Card back in, turn it off, and back on again. It's now found the file, and done the update already. I'm gonna go down to material, then go to model, and load material. We've got your secondary material in the right hand side, which could well be support material, and then your primary material in this left hand side here. Push these to open the door, take off this. Now here is where we could be putting in our spool holders like so, and then load the material on a spool, as a third party spool or material. But in this case, I'm going to use one of the materials that came with the printer, the ZPETG. I've now told it that I'm going to put in ZPETG and it's heating up the extruder. Then wants me to insert the filament up through this tube here, all the way to the nozzle. We're there now. Close the door. So that's the first look at the Zortrax Inventure. What do you think of it? For me personally, I'm sort of blown away just by the build quality. It is sort of reminiscent of some very high end commercial printers, and I know it's small, but it is seemingly like it will pack a lot of punch into this little unit. To be honest, I really don't think they'd be making money at the price they've got it up for sale at at the moment. So if this is something you'd probably be interested in, then uh, sooner rather than later is best. I'll be checking this out over the next few weeks and we'll do a proper thorough review in that time and list all the pros and cons that I've found with the machine. In the meantime, let's crack open that DSS wash station. So we've got a packing list again, the station itself, and a power cable. First impressions of this one, unlike the smooth plastic of the Zort track, we've got a black anodized metal for this DSS station. We've got a nylon cleaning brush, and another power cable for Europe. Fancy marigolds, or uh, chemical resistant gloves. Inside the unit, there is a heating element, and there's also a little rotating mixing unit which will presumably stir the water around that's in there. And 
and help it to wash and clean the supports, which is the purpose of this station, is to clean the soluble, water soluble supports off of the prints that come out of this machine. Finally, we've got this tube here, which is presumably the draining tube. And it inserts into the back here, where we've also got a release valve. The final box of three, we've got a few more materials. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I've wanted to test water soluble printing for a long time. And actually, I have done some in the past, but I got fed up with it because water soluble materials are inherently soluble and there is water in the atmosphere. So unless you've got an enclosed unit, you're probably gonna struggle printing unless you buy a separate external enclosed unit, uh, like a filament dryer or something like that, and print directly from that to the printer with a Bowden tube. I can never be bothered in the past, so here I am. We've got here Z Ultra Plus, which is the sort of Zortrax alternative to ABS, basically for creating decent functional parts that simulate injection molding. We've got some Z Support Premium, which is the dissolvable stuff. And I've also got some Z PLA in green. So there you have it. That's the unboxing of the three boxes done. What did you think? I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you're notified of videos that come in the future. As I said when I was going through this video, I could have done a deep dive much further into this printer and its features, but I didn't feel like I was going to do it justice in a quick, wrap-free video like this. So I'm gonna come back to it. As I say, if you're a subscriber, you'll know when I do those videos. In particular, I want to cover what it's like to actually use this printer, and I don't know that yet, so I can't do a fair video just yet. But the bed leveling, the build plate changes, the dual support, the dual use, the support use, any maintenance, how does it differ to a sort of cheaper consumer printer, those sort of main things I will cover in a following video before I do my final review where I will show the pros and cons of the printer and whether I would give the recommendation or not to buy it. So yeah, look forward to that and I'll see you then. Until next time, happy printing. Cheers.